Welcome to this new video where I will be talking about self-hosted runner for your GitHub Actions hosted on Kubernetes. But before that, let me explain why it's, in why it's interesting for you or when it could be interesting. So when you are on github.com and you build workflows, each of the jobs are executed by default on runners that are fully managed by GitHub. But sometimes, or when you are running, using GitHub Enterprise Server, so you host your own instance of GitHub, you have to use self-hosted runner to execute your actions. When you're on the cloud, you can do that also, for example, to do hybrid workflows where a part of the workflow will be executed on the cloud, the other part will be executed in your own IT, in your own data center, to access specific resources or specific software. So instead of installing runner manually, managing VMs, you can use Kubernetes to manage all the registrations on the life cycle of runner. This is exactly what I will show you now using a project called GitHub. Um, it's not a GitHub project, it's an open source project managed by different people in the communities, including uh, GitHub developers. So how do we, it's called Action Runner Controller, allowing you to use self-hosted runner on Kubernetes. So here I have a GitHub Enterprise Server. As mentioned before, you can use GitHub Cloud, where I have no runner so far. And we will see how it's registered automatically. But I have created a GitHub app already, just to allow the Action Runner Controller to be authenticated against the server. So you can see in the blog post how you configure this, how you create the app for this specific use case. So let's jump into Kubernetes. It's a vanilla, it's a brand new uh, Kubernetes. Nothing has been installed so far. So I will install following the documentation, the cert manager, creating its own namespace. And for most of the command, when I can, I use Helm. So installing the cert manager, 1.9, but be careful about the version of your uh, Kubernetes and the version of the cert manager. Look into the documentation. The so next step, it's to create a new namespace also for the controller. So Action Runner System in this case, I'm calling it as uh, matching the documentation and deploying the resources using a Helm chart. You can specify a specific version, 0.21 in this case. And after a few seconds, you will be able to configure the specific deployment. When I talk about configuration, it's about authentications, but it's also about configuring the, the controller to say which GitHub Enterprise server you are using if you are using on-prem instances. If we quickly look, now we have two new namespaces, right? We have Action Runner System and the Cert Manager. Now I need to specify to the controller how do you authenticate against um, GitHub to be able to register and interact with the server. So in this case, I'm using a GitHub application. You can see the app ID, the installation ID, the private file path. If you, you can also use, if you want, a personal access token. But I wanted to do this demonstration with a GitHub app. I will create a new namespace where I will put all, put all the runners. Each of the runners will be a specific resource you deploy using kubectl also. So let's do a new namespace called runners. Now, before deploying runners, I just want to show you that inside the organization, I have no runners, I have nothing in the groups, and we want to use Kubernetes to register uh, these runners automatically. So let's go back and I have created a small resource that is a runner deployment where you have the number of replica, classical, the namespace you want to use and you also have different labels including as in the specification part the organization targeted by uh, this specific runner. So let's do a kubectl apply with the specific file. So it will take some time to register. So let's look in the, at the status of the runners. So kubectl get runners in the namespace runners. You see, I have one runner pending and it's with the different labels and we see the organization. 
So Arc, Kubernetes, GKE as level, and demo for the targeted uh, organization. So when it's pending, it's, it's starting, it will be automatically registered into the server. So let's watch the specific command and also check into our GitHub Enterprise Server organization settings. So far, no runners, so you will just have to wait on refresh. And you see here, now I have a new runner that has been self, that will be automatically registered to this organization. So now I can use this runner in my application. So let's run a small action that has two parallel tasks. On the workflow, it's just doing hello world, very simple. So what will happen, the runner will, the workflow will ask for the runner to execute a task, it's active, but after each execution, the runner is decommissioned. So based on the configuration of your runners, it will stop, automatically start a new one for the next job. As you see, test one is done, Test 2 is waiting for a new runner and until the Action Runner controller has created a new runner, register on its idle. Now it's done and the test number 2 job is executing on the newly created runners. And same at the end, this runner will be decommissioned automatically. So they are all ephemeral by default. So here we have one single runner, so it's not very easy to scale. You cannot have parallel tasks with this specific configuration. So just by configuring the runner, changing the number of replicas, you will start multiple runners for this configuration. So let's modify the replica, apply the modification to your cluster, and it's done. If we look to the different runners, you will see that now we have three runners running. And if we go into GitHub, you see now we have multiple runners available, start, register and waiting for job to happen. So if we run all the jobs, they will now be executed in parallel. So you will see two jobs uh, active or two runners active, then destroy, then restart it. So both of them are active now and at the end, they will be restarted. Let's now register a runner at the repository level. So we have the three runners from the organization and what is nice, they are shared between all the repositories based on permission of the group. But let's add a new runner or multiple runners to uh, the repository. So it's the same kind of concept. You create a new resource but you instead of using um, the in the spec instead of using the organization you point this to a specific repository and you can use the replica the same way so i'm just adding a new label calculator service to specifically say this runner is for uh, for this specific project applying and we can wait and you see we have new metadata about the information explicitly the repository itself it's running so it has been registered uh, to uh, the repository. So let's refresh. Done. So now we have five runners uh, available for this application. This demonstration is just a quick introduction of what Action Runner Controller can do. I invite you to look into the notes of this video, to the link to the Action Runner Controller project, but also to the blog post where I explain step by step how you can reproduce the same demonstration inside your GitHub Enterprise server or your GitHub uh, Cloud environment. You will see that in the documentation that you can do many things and you have different ways of registering the runners and configuring the events that generate and start and stop uh, the runners or the containers used by the, as a runner. You also find some information about how you create your custom image, register this image in your private registry to be able to configure and deliver specific services for your different projects and needs. Thanks for watching and see you soon.